You are tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm your host, Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, April 28th. We're sharing local news and resources focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is episode 13, and the show airs live at noon on Tuesdays and Fridays and repeats at 5 p.m. both days and at noon on Sundays. And you can listen anytime online at kdrt.org. My guests today are Sheila Allen of Yellow Healthy Aging Alliance and Chris Granger of Cool Davis, and we'll have that first interview in just a few minutes. This Friday, May 1st, Congressman John Garamendi will be back with us again with updates from Washington. Recently, I interviewed Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor, and something he posted on Facebook yesterday struck a chord with me and felt like a good update. So these are his words. As of this morning, 161 Yolo County residents have been confirmed to have COVID-19. Of course, we know that there are more cases of the virus that have not been tested or confirmed, of our 220,000 residents countywide, we've conducted 1,803 tests. Of the 161 confirmed cases, 14 people have perished, and nine of those deaths are associated with the outbreak at the Stolwood Nursing Facility in Woodland. Great attention is being directed to support the residents and staff of that facility, and this side note is mine as of this morning. Deaths had risen to 16, with 11 of those at Stolwood. It's a sad situation. 270 homeless individuals are sheltering in place in individual motel rooms uh, across the county. They're receiving health and social service support, and there is an incredible network of volunteer efforts and people stepping up outside their usual roles to give help where it is needed. The shelter-in-place order remains in effect until May 1st, and we all need to continue to do our part. We've had our countywide shelter-in-place order in full effect since March 18th, with some earlier measures beginning on March 10th, so that's a bit more than two complete 14-day incubation periods. This week, the Board of Supervisors for Yolo County will consider the Yolo County Health Officer's Roadmap to Recovery that outlines possible modifications to the order and the conditions that would drive those modifications and we can expect that things to continue changing from here on out. We are far from finished with this, and the virus is far from finished with us. Stay safe. Uh, thank you, Don. Again, that update was from Yolo County Superv Supervisor Don Saylor. And just a reminder that as of yesterday, April 27th, face coverings are now mandatory in Yolo County when conducting any business in public, although not when exercising so long as social distancing is maintained. Again, everything's changing daily. Find out more at yolocounty.org. They have the COVID-19 dashboard there and also the Road to Recovery um, link. And in other news from our elected officials, tomorrow, April 29th, Senator Bill Dodd, a Democrat of Napa, will host a virtual town hall meeting at 6 p.m. to discuss the public health and economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. He'll be joined by Dr. Karen Smith, who's the former director of the California Department for Pu of Public Health, and also by a representative from the Napa Sonoma Small Business Development Center. Uh, there'll be presentations and then Q&A from listeners and viewers. You can get a live stream of the audio at ksvy.org or listen live locally on KSVY 91.3. That's in Napa. You can catch the video on YouTube on Sonoma TV's channel. You can email questions to townhall at ksvy.org or you can call them in to 707 933 9133. Shout out to our fellow community media outlets, uh, KSVY and Sonoma TV. And I'm working on getting uh, Senator Dodd booked on the show, so hopefully we'll get to hear from him directly soon. Let's take a minute for music before our first call. YOLO Healthing Age. YOLO. <laughs> I'm going to start that over. YOLO Healthy Aging Alliance is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to enhance the well being of older adults in YOLO County through education, collaboration, and advocacy. They work to identify and address gaps in services and connect people to the many resources and services throughout the county. Sheila Allen is their executive director, and she's here with us today. Hi there, Sheila. 
Hello, Autumn. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. Good to hear your voice. All right. Tell us a little bit about that, that big mission you have of education, collaboration, and advocacy. Yeah. Um, well, we started with our 10-year anniversary, and um, we started because there was an identified need, um, especially for a unified voice for older adults in Yolo County, and we did an assessment about what was needed, and so we um, came up with these three major categories mm -hmm. for our mission statement, and that's how we implement our programming. So we have educational programming that we do for the community, so we work with like the Alzheimer's Association, we have town hall meetings, we work with AARP, we also do educational programming for providers of services so they know about the latest research mm -hmm. and um, that, that kind and community binding together of information. Um, the next area is collaboration, and we found that there were, we, we thought there were a lot of services in the community, and when we started, we had 10 um, different organizations that provided services to older adults in Yolo County, hmm. and now we have 97 different oh, organizations wow. that all provide services. So now we know about them, so we can help to let the community know about them, and for each organization to know about the others. So if you go to Meals on Wheels, their coordinator knows, well, you're, you're um, isolated at home. Well, I know about the library home mm -hmm. delivery program, mm -hmm. and I know about, uh, you know, the phone, the, how to get a phone with, with bigger um, dials on it. They know about each other and can refer. And then advocacy is really the, the voice. So we have a group of older adults who are our, our senior advocates, and they look at local, regional, um, state, and national issues and provide some input on that kind of thing. So those are our three main things that we do. That's a, that's an amazing uh, level of growth in 10 years. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So, so COVID-19 impacted your organization right out of the starting gate because I know you had your annual benefit dinner scheduled right around the time that everything <laughs> shut down. So tell us about that. Yeah, we were um, scheduled for our 10th anniversary, as I've already mentioned, and then we also have an annual um, Senior Superstar Award mm -hmm. ceremony. So this is our, you know, we are a nonprofit, and so this is our the where we get our, um, our, our biggest influx of um, funding for the year is through our annual fundraiser. And because of the need to shelter in place, and in particular for this population of, our, of older adults, we needed to postpone that right away. So we have rescheduled it to October 4th right. and have um, decided that we're, it's October 4th no matter what. <laughs> we'll, figure out, we'll figure out a virtual way if that's the safe way to do it because we very, are very interested in making sure that people are safe and healthy. Yeah. Um, or we might have some modified in-person. We'll just have to wait and see in October. Right, right. It's really hard to project that far out. But when you're planning yeah. events, I, I get that. Yeah. I know. So, so those you advocate for are um, they're among the most at risk for contracting the virus. How has the organization adapted to serve them during this time? Um, well, we they, we asked our older adults to please shelter in place and stay home. Um, first, they will likely be the very um, last to, all, to be released and have it be safe for them to be out in the community. So we knew right away we needed to do something to address their isolation and also their need to still be connected to program services and to, to people, as, as all, all humans need to be connected. Mm -hmm. So we, um, by um, March 30th, launched a new program called Phone Friends for Seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that we implemented that is that we asked for community volunteers, which people, you know, Yolo County is so awesome about stepping up. So we had a nice group of um, volunteers right away who were ready to make the phone calls. And we were able to identify um, older adults who were lonely or isolated. Either they directly referred themselves or we did work with some of our partner organizations, those different, or 97 different organizations to say, hey, mm -hmm. if you know of anybody who could use a phone friend, it's kind of, it's a, it's an, it's, I tell my people when they are, when I, during the orientation, the volunteers that, you know, we're not asking them to be a therapist or to be a nurse, mm -hmm. we're asking them to be a friend. Right. So this is. We ask them that to start with, they can they would please anticipate calling each day, but then they can work out with their friend what feels right. Some people are are still calling every day. Like hmm. I call my mom in Wisconsin every day to make sure she's okay and what she did and what the weather was like. Um, and some people call once a week. And some of the calls are just a five minute check, and some of them are two hour calls. Right. So it really depends on the need. And then while they're talking with them. 
if they identify a, a need that the person has, then I give them a list of home-delivered um, food options, both grocery stores and restaurants, mm -hmm. and also home-delivered medications. So the two of them can kind of, as friends would, hey, I, I know about this if you want to, you want to try it. Mm -hmm. And then if there's anything, any higher level that they need, then the volunteer lets me know, and then mm -hmm. I go ahead and um, help to coordinate and get them connected to the right program or service. So it's a wellness check, but it goes it goes beyond that too. Yeah, into yeah, friendship. Exactly. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Were you at all surprised by uh, Governor? So on on April twenty fourth, Governor Newsom uh, announced a, a whole bunch of services to benefit seniors, which is wonderful. And one of them is a program to call them at home. Did yeah. you know about that, or were you surprised by that? Uh, um, no, I didn't know that was coming out. I'm like, well, what a good idea. So thought, <laughs> <laughs> Let them know, hey, in Yolo County, we're already doing that. <laughs> Yeah, um, since that time, I've had opportunities to talk to people at the state about it. So they're like, oh, that's great. Um, so I think it's totally fine to have um, that. They are really focusing on areas that don't have local call programs. Right. So there's a, a little bit more of that. Um, and it's totally fine if people in Yolo County volunteer for that or volunteer for ours or get calls either way. I think that there's plenty of people who are stuck in their house and would like somebody to talk to you. So sure. there's, there's plenty to go around. I don't mind at all. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's paying attention to the senior population, right? And their yeah, needs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So one question that's really stuck with me because I've 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 been phoning my own friends and I've in particular a couple of senior friends who they're having trouble envisioning what it's going to be like to come out of their houses. It feels risky. It fe feels scary. They're not sure they they want to do that. What are you hearing from your constituent population? Yeah, I think, well, um, first of all, there's a reason why they probably feel that way. is because mm -hmm. there is um, still a risk out there. So I would not recommend at any point... Um, right now anybody be be going out unless they actually have to and if they're wearing their mask but as we get to the point where it is um safe or it, or there's less um chance for community um acquisition of the virus and um, people are universally using their masks when they're out mm -hmm. um it, it's gonna it's gonna take a while so i could totally understand somebody's um apprehension about going out so i I was just, I had to hang up on those, well, they, they didn't know I was there, but I was <laughs> watching the, the Board of Supervisors were just discussing their um, roadmap to recovery, yeah. and they're really talking about a stepwise approach. So I think that that will give people confidence to know that, you know, there, we're doing this step, and then we do a check. Did that work? Is, it, uh, is there a, a suddenly an increase in, in infections, or mm -hmm. are we okay? Well, now we're going to take this step. So it's more of a, you know, from a older adult, it's like, okay, so now you, like, open the front door. Is everything safe out there? Okay, now we're going like, <laughs> go in the front yard. Okay? So, so I, I think um, it's going to take some time, and it might be some time before, yeah. uh, and who knows if we'll actually go back to what, um, what our previous normal was. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's a really big and, and valid question right now because you know with talk of a possible resurgence in the fall, um, I mean I do have one friend who said I don't think I'm ever going to leave my house again, you know, and she's mm -hmm. she's very old, but um, it, it's a it's it's a strange new world we're navigating. Yeah, when um, my husband was on sabbatical in Hong Kong, and I went and spent some time with him when he was there, and they had um, SARS a, a few years yeah. back that were, had a significant impact on their population. Okay. And even um, now, when I, well, not, not now, but when I was there a year ago, you could see that they had, um, uh, like a, in museums, the touch screen says, these touch screens are sanitized every hour. And wow. like the hand the handrails going into the subway had a similar sign. Mm -hmm. And it was very much the culture that if you were sick, you better have a mask on mm -hmm. just yeah. so that you protect the people around you. If somebody would cough on the subway, like heads would turn. If the person <laughs> didn't have a mask, they'd be like, mm-mm. I, I yeah. think we're getting to that point here, uh, yeah. I, I mean, at least among some of us. Well, it's been great mm -hmm. to hear from you and hear about the work of Yellow Healthy Aging Alliance. If people want to reach you, um, how about a, a web page and a phone number where they can uh, get more info or get involved? Yeah, absolutely. It's 
YOLO Healthy Aging, all one word, dot org. Mm-hmm. And on that front page there, we have a whole section on COVID. Um, that's where you can find phone friends for seniors. You can find um, reliable resources for information and educational things, and also some of those community resources. So right there on the front page, and also you can find my email and phone number on there also. Happy to talk to anyone who has any questions. Great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Autumn. All right. Take care. That was Sheila Allen, Executive Director of Yellow Healthy Aging Alliance. And again, yellowhealthyaging.org is their website. Uh, We have another call in just a couple of minutes. I want to squeeze in a couple of announcements. I was excited to get an email today from my friend Danielle Fedor. Danielle is a visual artist who's led many community mural projects here in Davis. And uh, studies have shown that art makes public health programs more effective and impactful. And in that spirit, it's just been announced that the city of Davis is giving many grants to visual artists to create new public art that promotes community health and resilience during the coronavirus crisis, um, as well as long-term environmental vitality and stewardship. This is a project that will employ both artists who are struggling economically and volunteer artists who just want to help out in solidarity. Artists must be from Davis environs or working here. All projects will be created while following public health guidelines, including the wearing of masks, the sanitizing of hands, and the distancing of our physical selves. The project has two components, and there's a couple of hashtags that go with this. Hashtag health is in our community uses sidewalk stencils with hip humorous health messages to promote social distancing, mask wearing, hand washing and other smart stuff. And hashtag plan for resilience uses temporary murals in parks and plazas to honor public holidays while reflecting on long term resilience and planning. Uh, You can apply for a mini grant ASAP or Uh, sign up to be a volunteer artist. Applications are reviewed on a rolling basis starting April 30th. And there's an online Google link for the app. I'll just direct you to email the project manager, again, artist Danielle Fedor at daniellefedor at gmail.com. I'll spell her name, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-F-O-D-O-R at gmail.com. You can also call her at 530- Three zero two seven one four three, and I think time for one more. The downtown gifting stimulus program we talked about last week with Brett Maraska uh, has completely sold out, which is great news for downtown merchants. Maraska says they are working on funding for round two of the project. And finally, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and Fridays at 3, our friends at the Yolo County Library feature Ask the Librarians for personalized book recommendations. Check in with them on their social media, Facebook or Instagram, to ask your question in real time. And we are going to get set up for our next caller, who, and I think she's here. All right. Cool Davis is an active network of residents, community organizations, businesses, and community institutions committed to implementing the city of Davis's climate action and adaptation plan. They're normally our upstairs neighbors here at 1623 Fifth Street, but today I'm talking remotely with their executive director, Chris Granger. Hi there, Chris. Hi there, Autumn. How are you today? I am well. Nice to hear your voice. Um, I've actually, I've been looking forward to chatting with you because the environment may be the one thing benefiting from this pandemic. Um, What are you seeing and what are you talking about in climate change circles around that? Well, there's a lot going on as as, you can see um, uh, on data that's coming in um, from satellites Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking at uh, those emission reductions all around the world. And also watching those economies come back online as um, people start to move around again. And so um, we saw some of this kind of change um, happen um, back in the Great Recession, Mm -hmm. not quite as dramatically. Um, And so what it's shown us is that sort of temporary reality of when we do make major changes in our lifestyles, how much control we really do have over impacts on the environment. and so I guess um, right now we're all trying to think a little bit about um, how do we um, help people think deeply about this moment 
um, about how much control we really do have, um, about how what we do really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that we're all learning about as we um, hunker down in our homes or or out in the community doing important work um, to keep our community safe, mm -hmm. and um, that every every decision we make going forward um, can be make fundamental change um, in in what ha what happens on our planet. Yeah, one discussion point I've seen is that you know there were a lot of large companies that didn't want to let employees telecommute because they didn't think it would work. They didn't think it was possible, and so now I think a big what what if we we're finding out it is possible. It's maybe not ideal, but it's possible. And so how can we you know lessen the load of of commuters and and carbon emissions and all of that moving forward? I, there's a lot of challenges, but there's a lot of opportunity there too. Yeah, um, our um, Michael McCormick, who is the board president for Cool Davis, mm -hmm. uh, spoke kind of deeply about that on our um, Earth Day um, Zoom Zoominar that we had last week, right. uh, which um, is available for people to view if they're interested. And um, he talked about that in his own company and how they're really doing some major rethinking about what they're going to do um, uh, with uh, the way they move around and whether they hold um, they move to each other for meetings or use the kind of formats they're using now. Mm -hmm. um, I think also, you know, we're facing as a community, you know, what kinds of decisions we'll be making um, for ourselves in the future, whether it's what we build, it's also about how we move around. And so really uh, looking at how we can collectively invest in the future uh, in appropriate um ways that we can we can work together we we're, we're so lucky to have unitrans and um our bike uh, mm -hmm. uh road infrastructure but um it's going to be a more of a challenge uh for us to use unitrans and so it's going to take some courage for us to really be willing to um live the future that we want in the middle of this um pandemic yeah um we're trying to keep going with things like how do you do electric vehicle ride and drives when you can't mm -hmm. put people in cars? Well, we're, we're going to continue to do um, online demos for people from our um, local owner driveways. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to build uh, out a network with our business community so that we can connect interested um, uh, owners with um, those businesses who are um, interested in, in um, getting their products out to people, if even if they're going to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis in their at their home or mm -hmm. in their neighborhood. So, yeah, um, it's it's complicated, but I think this moment kind of reminds us about how important it is uh, the work that we've been trying to to move our community forward in. Right. And you, Cool Davis has not been sitting still during this. I, I know you've had a busy few weeks. You mentioned the Earth Day Zoom and but y there was also the uh, the sing out that you took part in. And I know you've started a, a vlog. So tell us more about your COVID-19 activities. Yeah, well, the, the vlog is kind of interesting because it's actually something we had been thinking we wanted to do. Um, but it didn't seem as maybe important as as actually our um person-to-person -person kind of contact that we that we do mm -hmm. helping households um, so uh, but what we did is launch a, a video lo um, blog we have a new cool Davis YouTube channel called live cool Davis and um, we're focusing right now on energy conservation and energy efficiency because we think you know we've all moved all of our office work to home mm -hmm. our kids are home from school Everybody, all of that energy use that used to be in a business and used to be at the school is now in our home. I which feel you. Our utility bills are all going up. <laughs> and so, you know, luckily it's spring and was cool, but <laughs> now it's gotten hot. Yeah. We're all fa going to be facing um, so some increased utility bills. And so um, we're doing some advising on different simple things you can do to cut your utility bills and also how to analyze them and also what kind of rebates and other things are out there. Mm -hmm. And for those who have, were thinking about, you know, getting solar and um, working or maybe they're going to need to replace their heating and cooling systems, we're trying to provide them 
with appropriate um, advice and point them at our materials that help with that kind of decision making. Um, because it's not that e it's it's hard right now to um, think about major um, activities like that in your home, mm -hmm. but planning them is something you can do right now. Right. Um, so we do have uh, what we call our cool solutions uh, documents and cool um, solutions campaigns, and we have a lot of information on our website and um, uh, PDF uh, forms for people to use uh, to help them through those decision-making processes. Great, and we'll mention this again at the end, but that's cooldavis.org. And uh, I'm sorry, would you say the YouTube channel again? It had a name. It's called it Live Cool Davis. Okay. Um, so we've talked a little bit about some of the the societal struggles and, and challenges as we move out of this time and start to return to, you know, businesses. I don't want to say business is normal because I don't think that's going to be it, but business. Um, what are what are some of Cool Davis's uh, struggles and opportunities there? I think like all nonprofits, you've had to stop doing things that you normally do. I know you're usually out at farmers market, you're out at community events, you're you know you're pressing the flesh and spreading the good word, and you can't do that now. So, what does the next six months look like for you? Well, um, kind of keying off the. Um the video um, blogging uh, we're trying to do already do uh, more consulting via phone mm -hmm. and um, and we're trying to build up our volunteer core that um, of folks who may be actually based in their own homes or in their own neighborhoods who might be interested in helping us with um, with getting the word out and also advising um, other homeowners on uh, different actions. Um, we have um, uh, some really great um, parts of our organizations, our working groups that um, are doing really interesting things. Our Davis Electric Vehicle Owners Group has moved all of their content online and their, their membership meetings that happen every other month. Um, and like I said, they're looking at um, mm. providing the, what we used to do at the farmer's market um, via yeah. Uh, Zoom. Yeah. Um, so well, those are some of the things that we're, we're working at. And that as long-term... Um, we have to, we have to see how how we're going to move around the community, um, but you will see some more visibility for Cool Davis's Cool Solutions um, uh, checklist tool Great. and kind of mobilizing the whole community around making a plan. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We are out of time for today, so take care, Chris. Thanks, thanks so much, Autumn. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. That's Chris Granger with Cool Davis. Thanks for tuning in. I will be back on Friday. Uh, Congressman John Garamendi joins us again.